boys and girls, it's me. And as you can see, I'm back in the repair lair. I'm taking a little break right now from things. I got my cup of coffee here. And uh, it's been a few weeks since I made a video. I think now it's time to make one. And uh, I just happen to be working on a radio that I found in a problem where I think that folks who are new to the hobby might, uh, might struggle with a little bit. So I figured I'd make the time to talk about it. Boy, this is good stuff. Hmm. Let's get to it. Okay, here's the top of the radio chassis here, and as you see, there's there's actually quite a few tubes on here for for transformless or AC/DC set. Okay, I've got uh, one here, two, three, four, five, six, seven tubes. So that's quite a bit. But uh, you know. One of the things I always do is when I get ready to, to work on the radio before I do anything else or before I even say test it out, I want to make sure all my tubes are good. Okay, now you're looking back at the front of the radio. Now, I was able to check all the tubes and I actually found two bad tubes. Uh, one was an easy fix. The other one, however, was a little bit different. And this was one of them. And this is probably original radio. You can see it's a General Electric tube, and this is a General Electric radio. There's a logo right here. But as I turn turn the tube around, take a look at this. BL42B. Now what that is, is a ballot, what they call ballast tube. Okay, so what's a ballast tube? Well, basically all a ballast tube is, it's just basically a, a resistor or resistors that are inside a shielded container like it was a shielded tube and what the idea was was to basically drop the voltage kind of the same way as a uh, well what I call a, a <laughs> some of my friends call a curtain burners the radios had the resistor line cord that was actually built into the line cord and it acts as a resistor so what this does is it actually drops the voltage on the filament string so that you can run the other tubes without a transformer and they made these radios basically as an inexpensive uh, uh, option rather than saying uh, putting a transformer in the radio so I'll explain what those numbers mean in a minute but let me let me explain how I found this well I know that this ballast tube is bad but how did I come to that conclusion well I um, I haven't seen a tube tester unless uh, someone makes one. If they do, you can pass it off in the comments. They'll actually test the ballast tube, but I've never seen one. So uh, let me explain how I figured out that this one was bad. Now this is the tube installed into the chassis of the radio, just as you see it. And the way I test these out is actually quite simple. What I'll do is I'm going to take the radio and I'm going to flip it around. So basically what you have is if you look, here's the keyway of the tube right here, okay? And then I just go over here and count two pins and you can see there's a wire connected to this part of the socket right here. So this terminal comes into play. And then if you look over here on the other side, you go over and there's also, uh, I wish I could get the light a little bit better. Or maybe you can see that a little bit better now, but there's actually a wire going on this side here and on that side there and what I do is I kind of reference that and then what I'll do now basically since this is just nothing but a big resistor I'll take that tube out oh, let me, maybe I can get it from here now what I'll do is I'll go to those same pins and check it with a volt ohmmeter okay I have the camera on the, my ohmmeter right now and I'm going to connect it up, connect my own meter to the pins that I was just talking about here. So I have it, two pins on either side of the keyway. And as you can see, the meter isn't really reading anything. I'll try this pin too. This is the first pin that also had a wire going to it. You can see it's just not registering anything. So let me show you what it's going to look like with a replacement. Okay, here is the tube that I had uh, purchased as a replacement. I've already tested this in the radio, so I know it works, but just this is just for demonstration purposes. And although this tube, the, the original tube here, let me turn it around, 
it says BL42B and this one just says L42B. It's literally the same tube. But again, I'll explain what these letters mean in the, the toward the end of the video. So let's just take Okay, we'll go back to the, where this, the key is, and let's see, it was two pins over from the key, so it's this pin here. I can't do this, I'm trying to do this through the camera so everybody can see, and two pins over from the other way. Okay, now you can see, now with it connected, you see it, I'm getting a resistance reading here. Okay, so one of the connections I'm getting, I was getting 100 and 113 ohms, and now I'm going to the other one. I'm getting you know, almost you know, about 1.9k ohms. Okay, so what do these numbers mean? So here's the here's the tube right here. We have a BL42B, and there's a lot of information on the web about this uh, antique radio forms, and uh, this is just a quickie explanation. There's a more detailed one that you could probably find if you need to know more. Um, the first letter is B. Just indicates whether a light was used with in the string with the uh, ballast uh, ballast resistor. So uh, that's what the B stands for. The L designates what type of bulb you take and the different current. So if this would have been a BK, it would take a number 40. In this case, it's an L, which uses a number 46 bulb. And there's different, th these are all, I think, for the most part, 6.3 volt bulbs anyway, uh, just different currents. And if it was an M, it was BM42, then it would say uh, you'd use either a 50 or a 51 bulb. Now, the next two numbers are really a kind of a key ingredient here. The, the 42 means is, is, is basically what's going to create the overall voltage drop in the string. So what happens is now, um, if you find ballast tubes with larger numbers, uh, typically, I mean, I think there's even a ballast tube that's uh, it's got a 90, so there's a 90 volt drop, and typically that means there's only like that's probably like a one or two tube radio. Um, the lesser numbers means probably a bigger tube count. I think for the 42, for the most part, uh, like in the case of this General Electric radio, it's six tubes uh, plus the ballast tube, making an overall seven tube radio. And then the letter just designates the wiring and the configuration of wiring in the in the uh, tube. So uh, hopefully that'll help you out. Well, that's it for today. I hope that was a help to you. So uh, basically, all I gotta do now is uh, button this thing up. I think I'll just clean up the case a little bit and uh, give this back to the owner, and uh, he'll be happy with it, I'm sure. So hey, thanks for tuning in and. Uh, Again, there's a lot of information on the web on uh, on ballast tubes and, and that, but I just gave you a kind of a general idea of what to look for. So just remember, you know, it's just another, you know, basically like having a big resistor in there. So just make sure you check the check the resistance, and if it, if it's open like the one that I had here uh, that was in the radio, then you're toast. It ain't gonna work. You need another one. So thanks for stopping by and take care. Bye. <laughs> 네. Speak directly to citizens. Information radio is the way you find out about things going on around our area, like our history, happenings, and hints for visitors. Tune to this radio frequency to hear important notices about emergencies and steps you can take to minimize their impact on you and your family. Set a button on your car radio so you can find this frequency fast when safety is an issue. FCC rules that govern this service allow this station to broadcast any... <laughs> Slowly, our little pedal will get better. You can see signs of autism in children as young as 18, 15, 3, 4, don't...